We have a special visitor in the studio today. Yaakov Peri is a former head of the Shin Bet and he currently serves as a member of the Knesset for the Yeshatid party. Thanks for coming in. Hi, Natasha. Thank you for having us. So, you know, it seems that Israel has been losing the war against terror in this recent wave of violence that we're seeing. Is it fair to say that? No, I don't think it's fair to say. We have witnesses uh, waves of terror since 1967 and before that as well. And it's a wave, a continuous wave, which there is a real problem to uh, stop it or to uh, manage it. Mainly because of the fact that there are lone wolves. And in the case of a lone wolf, you cannot gather intelligence and focus when a terrorist act is going to be executed. So youngsters, uh, men and women, are uh, deciding in the morning to stab or to run over or to shoot a, a Jew, an Israeli, a policeman, a civilian, uh, a guy who protects a uh, mall or something, and uh, they are executing it after a uh, couple of minutes, a couple of hours. Now the awareness of citizens and the uh, policemen and the army is really uh, something incredible, but in order to stop it, you have to change the environment. That's what I want to ask you. How, how do you suggest combating this trend of lone wolf attacks? Well, you have to change the environment, and I don't want to go too deep into political uh, issues. But in order to stop just such a wave, you have to create an environment of hope, environment of uh, something which is going to be built in the future, because the uh, reasons of uh, this wave, the main reason was the uh, uh, dispute around the Mount Temple. But the, um, the main uh, issues are incitement, uh, despair, uh, frustration. And in order to stop it, you have to change the environment. In order to change the environment, the government has to initiate. Well, that's one of the big states. questions that we see here because, you know, there are, right now um, Herzog says that a, a two-state solution is not a viable option right now. And obviously that's been a rhetoric that we've been hearing from uh, the current government coalition. So how do you change that environment if that's the mentality that First exists all, right now? First of all, in my view, you have to change the government, but I'm not going to uh, go into it too deep. But uh, uh, Mr. Herzog didn't say that uh, you cannot do a deal. He said it's right not the right moment now. And no doubt that we have a, a difficult and a problematic problem, a partner. Uh, I'm not going to advocate the Palestinians because, uh, I mean, it's, it's, real, it's a real problem. But Israel is the strongest and the most uh, um, capable uh, uh, country in this area. And we have to initiate some steps. It can be bilateral steps, it can be unilateral steps, and to change the way that people are thinking which there is a dead end or a deadlock. You have to open uh, hope, you have to open some vision towards the uh, future, and it doesn't matter what kind of uh, political solution we will uh, get, but the fact that Israel is totally uh, uh, criticized by the international uh, arena, international world. I just came back from a visit to the European Union in Brussels and Hague, and you cannot imagine even good, good friends and allies of Israel are criticizing the effect that we are peace refusals, that we are not initiating anything, and we are a, uh, what we are, they are considering a conqueror. And it doesn't matter if you are a liberal conqueror or a um, tougher one. So we have to take it into consideration and there is no other alternative. If you look at it from the demographical point of view, if you look at it from the political point of view, if you will look at it from the international uh, uh, acceptance point of view, we have to initiate something and that's the only way to stop such waves of terror. So you spoke about this uh, international convention that you went to abroad uh, that was focused on the BDS movement um, and its effects on the world. How is Israel planning to combat BDS? And in your opinion, what do you think is the best way to do that? 
Well, BDS is not one organization. B BDS is a movement. B right. BDS is a, an atmosphere. And it's due to the countries to decide if they are adopting embargoes or BDA uh, steps or not. Now, the fact that there are too many or so many uh, Palestinian communities, mainly in Europe, uh, affects even a local supermarket or a, a local university uh, or, or, or a, a cultural event. And uh, in order to uh, fight it, in order to uh, minimize it, Israel has to unite forces. Nowadays, the fight against BDS is uh, divided between four or five ministries. It's the uh, foreign ministry, it's the Mr. Ardans, the um, uh, um, internal security uh, uh, ministry, etc. And you have to put it in one hand with one budget and one task force. Even if we will do it, it will not stop the um, environment. It will not stop the uh, movement of BDS, but we can minimize so it. So there needs to be an essential large organization that's bringing all these people together to what fight as we one are calling, force. What I'm calling a task force. Right. They've devoted to this issue and they devoted to the fight against it. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the average citizen uh, who wants to get involved in, in combating the BDS movement, what, what is your suggestion? How can they get involved? As for uh, individuals, I mean, the fact that, I mean, we, we have to say the truth. The European Union, by uh, getting this uh, decision or resolution, is a hypocritic one. Because let's take, for example, the Golan Heights. Even if Israel would decide today that we are getting uh, out from the Golan Heights, to whom are we going to give it? There is no Syria. The Arab world is divided, uh, 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 struggles in, in a, a, a struggle against the radical Islam. So there is an hypocrisy in uh, the uh, European Union uh, resolution. And we, every one of us, as individuals, when he goes abroad, when he talks to foreigners, when he has a chance to talk in the media, has to uh, uh, at least give some examples. Because the Israeli-Palestinian dispute is not the only dispute in the world. It's one of the disputes. And the European Union didn't give any resolution about Sudan or about Sri Lanka or about uh, other places where are, there are still uh, big disputes and it's all aimed against us. So some of us are calling it anti-Semitism, which is true, but it's not the main uh, issue. And some are saying, look, it's always to blame the Jews or to blame the Israelis, which is also right, but it's not the whole story. We have to fight everyone in his own means against such movements and against such a uh, criticism. And, uh, at the end, it sums to a better effect. Absolutely. I guess the final question that I want to ask you is, you know, we see that Israel does not have the best image in the media internationally. And a lot of that is perhaps related to the way that uh, Israeli security recently is going about uh, dealing with these recent terror attacks. You have an issue here. You have a lot of young attackers that are coming out against people. How do you deal with it? What is the Shin Bet and what does Israeli security need to be doing to make sure uh, that they're able to, you know, stop these lone wolf attacks, uh, but in a way that's not necessarily going to get such a negative response from the international community? Or is that even possible, of course? To my sorrow, it's almost impossible because uh, our image, the international image of Israel, is getting worse to my sorrow every day. And it's not out of only just taking the blame or putting the blame of Israel. It's the environment. It's the, uh, I mean, to be against uh, Israel is very uh, popular. It's very, uh, I would say, uh, fashionable. And they, uh, in order to change it upside down, you have to initiate a, a political move. 
The existing government cannot do it. It's a right-wing government, and Netanyahu knows that if he will initiate something, he can lose his government. So it's not possible right now. But we have to do it this way or another. And we have also to understand that there is not a golden solution to this problem. It's not if the Shin Bet or the army or the police or the government will do A, B, C, it will stop it. It's a terror that fuels itself. And the fact that the 99% of the terrorists are being killed is not a, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't stop it. On, on the contrary, it even fuels it. Uh, so uh, we have to go into the roots, and the roots are showing that it's an atmosphere, it's an environment, it's lack of hope, hope, it's uh, frustration, it's incitement, and uh, in order to stop it or to minimize it, you have to do something which is on the greater level, on the political initiation uh, and vision, and not a, a local uh, solution. And thank you so much for coming in. My pleasure.